The 15th of April, 1945, southwest of Bergen, Nazi Germany. The British 11th Armoured Division liberates Bergen-Belsen, one of the worst Nazi concentration camps, which would epitomize the true bestiality and horrors of the Nazi regime and its death camps. The British forces find 13,000 unburied dead bodies and almost 60,000 prisoners who are sick and starved. More than 13,000 former prisoners, too ill to recover, will die of various diseases such as typhus and tuberculosis during the months following the camp's liberation. The British forces capture male and female Nazi personnel responsible for these horrors and force them to help bury the dead bodies in mass graves. One of them is Wilhelm Dörr. Wilhelm Dörr was born on the 9th of February, 1921, in Merenberg, then part of the Weimar Republic, which was the name given to the German government from 1918 to 1933. He was only 11 years old when Adolf Hitler, the leader of the Nazi party, was appointed Chancellor of Germany on the 30th of January 1933 by the German president Paul von Hindenburg. Like millions of other German boys from the Nazi era, Wilhelm Dörr joined the Hitler Youth and was a member of the organization from 1932 to 1939. The Hitler Youth became the primary tool the Nazis used to indoctrinate young people with Nazi ideology, thus shaping the beliefs, thinking, and actions of the German youth. While in January 1933, the Hitler Youth had approximately 100,000 members. By the end of the year, this figure had increased to over 2 million. Jews were not allowed to join these organizations. The Hitler Youth was a paramilitary organization designed to train boys as future fighters and soldiers for war. As an official organization of the Nazi state, the Hitler Youth had a military structure at the local, regional, and national levels. Boys practiced military drills and learned how to handle weapons. They also worked on farms in the summer and participated in competitive sports. While some boys enjoyed the physical challenge, competition and camaraderie, others found the constant focus on preparing for war and sacrificing themselves for the fatherland overwhelming and alienating. In 1936, a law declared the Hitler Youth to be the only legally permitted youth organization in Germany and stated that all of the German youth in the Reich is organized within the Hitler Youth. Compliance, however, was not universal. The members had to be ethnic Germans, German citizens, and free of hereditary diseases. By December 1936, Hitler Youth membership had reached over 5 million. In March 1939, a new decree required all youth aged between 10 and 18 to join the Hitler Youth even if the parents objected. Parents who refused to allow their children to join were subject to investigation by the authorities. In fact, the Hitler Youth and its female section, the League of German Girls, even encouraged their members to report to their leaders about what was happening in their schools or churches, as well as if their parents or neighbors were not acting in line with the regime. Schools, too, played an important role in spreading Nazi ideas to German youth. From their first days at school, German children were imbued with a cult of Adolf Hitler, and his portrait was a standard fixture in all classrooms. While censors removed some books from the classroom, German educators introduced new textbooks that taught students love for Hitler, obedience to state authority, militarism, racism, and anti-Semitism. World War II began on the 1st of September, 1939, when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. Before the war, Wilhelm Dörr worked on his father's farm, he got married and had one child. After being rejected for service by the Wehrmacht, the German armed forces, in December 1940, he volunteered for the Waffen-SS, which was the military branch of the SS. During his training as a combat engineer in Dresden, in October 1941, he fell seriously ill with rheumatism, which led to his hospitalization for several months. When recovered, Dörr was reassigned to the SS Totenkopfverbände, or Death's Head units, in the summer of 1942, and then went on to serve as a guard at the Sachsenhausen concentration camp until December 1943. The Death's Head units were an independent unit within the SS, responsible for administering the Nazi concentration and extermination camps throughout Germany and later occupied Europe. The units were trained to conduct themselves with strict discipline and cruelty, and to view the prisoners under their guard as enemies of the state, who should be destroyed if possible. They were responsible for facilitating what the Nazis called the Final Solution, 
known since the war as the Holocaust, which was the genocide of Jews in Europe. In 1938, Hitler announced that they were to become military units. Some groups were then discharged from guarding the camps for combat duty, serving in Poland and the Soviet Union. As the units were trained to be barbaric in their treatment of the camp prisoners, so too did they act on the field of combat. Death said units were known to be cruel and ferocious warriors. While at the beginning of World War II, they had 24,000 members, including reservists, by January 1945, that number had increased to 40,000. In January 1944, Der was transferred to the Mittelbau-Dora concentration camp, where he served as a block leader, and in September 1944, to its satellite camp Kleinbordungen, where he served as a deputy commander. Mittelbau Dora served as a subcamp of the Buchenwald concentration camp until it became independent in 1944. The slave laborers from Mittelbau Dora were used not only to produce V weapons, such as the V 1 flying bomb and V 2 rockets, which were aimed primarily at London, but also to extend the nearby tunnels in Konstein, which is a hill that served as a natural protection against the Allied bombing for the underground factory named Mittelwerk, in which the V weapons were produced. These so-called weapons of retaliation, as the Germans called them, were constructed and stored in the underground facilities and bombproof shafts. The inmates of Mittelbaudora were treated in a brutal and inhumane manner, working 14-hour days and being denied access to basic hygiene, beds, and adequate rations. Prisoners too weak or ill to work were sent to Auschwitz-Birkenau, or Mauthausen, to be killed. The inmates were subject to extreme cruelty, and as a result they often suffered injuries, including permanent disability, disfigurement, and death. Severe beatings were routine, as were deliberate starvation, torture, and summary executions. In many cases the prisoners were compelled to hang other prisoners under penalty of execution if they failed to cooperate. The death toll at Mittelbaudora was high with estimates suggesting that around 20,000 prisoners died as a result of the camp's conditions, including malnutrition, exhaustion and disease. Whilst at Kleinbordungen, Der managed around 620 camp inmates used as slave laborers in the underground factory. On one occasion, Der caught two prisoners hiding in a potato cellar, and as a punishment he ordered three prisoners to beat them, which they did, until the two prisoners died. Near the end of the war, when Germany's military force was collapsing, the Allied armies closed in on the Nazi concentration camps. The Soviets approached from the east, and the British, French, and American forces from the west. The Germans began frantically to move the prisoners out of the camps near the front and take them to be used as forced laborers in camps inside Germany. Prisoners were first taken by train, and then by foot, on death marches. Prisoners were forced to march long distances in bitter cold, with little or no food, water, or rest. Those who could not keep up were shot. When US troops appeared poised to capture Mittelbaudora and its surrounding areas in April 1945, the evacuation of the camp was ordered. Der was one of the 45 SS men who led a brutal death march of hundreds of Kleinbordungen inmates to the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp in Lower Saxony. The march started on the 5th of April, 1945, when 610 prisoners were forced to march for days till they reached Bergen-Belsen on the 11th of April. During the journey, the SS conducted numerous summary executions of prisoners who attempted to escape or otherwise slow the progress of the march. One group of prisoners was forced to march towards the town of Gardelegen, located in northeastern Germany, where a large barn and several nearby buildings were prepared as a makeshift prison. On the 13th of April, 1945, there were some 4,000 prisoners in the Gardelegen area who had arrived a few days earlier from Mittelbaudora its satellite camps, and from the Neuengamme subcamp, Hanover Stöcken. There they had to deboard from the freight cars because the trains could not advance any further due to air raid damage to the rail lines. More than a thousand prisoners, many of them sick and too weak to march any further, were taken from the town of Gardelegen to a large barn on one of the local estates and forced inside the building. They were locked inside the barn, which was then doused in gasoline and set on fire. 1,016 inmates were burned alive, suffocated, or shot by the SS as they tried in desperation to escape by digging under the barn's walls. When on the following day the US Army entered Gardelegen, they were horrified. Dead bodies were everywhere, while the barn was still smoldering. According to several witnesses, Wilhelm Dürr was one of the SS officers who participated in atrocities against the marching prisoners. 
Ernst Popner was one of the 610 prisoners who was forced to march from Mittelbau Dora to Bergen Belsen. According to his testimony, the first day they marched from 7 a.m. until dusk, and they covered 51 kilometers. They received no food from the SS, and most inmates wore only clogs. On the first day of the march, two men collapsed, and some of the fellow prisoners put them on a handcart, which they then pulled along. The prisoners and SS guards then took a break overnight, on the field next to a barn, about three kilometers from the town of Osterode. On the following day, the 6th of April 1945, Wilhelm Dürr took the two men that had collapsed the previous day, and another man who had also been in a distressed condition, into the barn. He made these three men kneel down, and shot two of them in the back of the head, firing two shots at each of them. The third prisoner tried to escape, but Dürr shot him as well. He then ordered some prisoners to dig a shallow grave near the barn, and bury the inmates he had just murdered. After this incident, Dürr would shoot anyone who was not able to keep pace. According to another witness, Bohomil Grumann, Dürr began to shoot all stragglers or anyone who was given lifts in hand-drawn carts by other inmates. After shooting the victims, he would just leave them off the road or in the forest. According to Grumann, Dürr shot at least 46 prisoners in total. On the 15th of April 1945, four days after Dürr and his group had arrived at Bergen Belsen, the camp was liberated by British troops. The Brits found around 60,000 starving prisoners in the camp, most of them seriously ill. Shortly after liberation, Wilhelm Dürr was captured by the British forces, together with his fellow Nazi criminal colleagues such as Josef Kramer, the Commandant of Auschwitz-Birkenau, and the last Commandant of Bergen Belsen. After evacuating Bergen Belsen, British forces burned down the whole camp to prevent the spread of typhus. During its existence, approximately 50,000 persons died in the Bergen Belsen camp, and more than 13,000 former prisoners, too ill to recover, died after liberation. Justice finally caught up with Dürr when he was tried at the Belsen trial, which began on the 17th of September, 1945. He was indicted for the atrocities which had occurred during the death march from Mittelbau Dora. At the trial, Dürr refused to confess to any of the charges brought against him, and claimed that neither at the concentration camps where he served, nor during the death march, did he kill anyone. However, his lies did not help him escape justice. On the 17th of November, the British military tribunal sentenced Wilhelm Dürr to death by hanging. He was 24 years old when the British executioner Albert Pierpoint carried out the sentence on the 13th of December, 1945. There were no tears shed for Wilhelm Dürr. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.